Okay. Okay, and uh, we should be live. Okay, uh, so hello and welcome to Sam for class. My name is Darko and I'm going to uh, walk you today through some basics of, of Sam for. Um, if you haven't already, <clears throat> please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will have some interesting material there and we will be pushing more uh, tutorials and walkthroughs uh, to, the, to this channel. Um, yeah, if you have troubles hearing me, seeing me at any point, uh, please, please let me know. And uh, yeah, this is a great chance for you to ask questions. So on the right side of the screen, uh, you, you have a chat box where you know, please, please feel free to you know, throw in the, the comment at any point and I will do my best to, to answer your questions. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to try to keep this uh, to roughly 30 minutes. And uh, yeah, the agenda is to generally uh, go through the pipeline, setting up um, your jobs uh, that are running on virtual machines, Mac OS, Docker containers. Uh, then we are going to see how you can set up uh, promotions and with that deployment and uh, yeah we are going to take a look how you can also utilize artifacts and uh, also uh, how you can uh, cache your uh, how you can utilize caching to uh, improve the, the speed of your of your pipeline uh, okay so let's get started uh, I already have an organization set up on Sam for in a, in a project. Uh, I'm not going to go through these steps. Those are uh, really, really straightforward. And uh, yeah, uh, what I have here at the moment is a pipeline, uh, which I have configured to our workflow builder. And uh, let's see what it's doing. So uh, it's composed out of four blocks. And uh, blocks uh, can run sequentially, can run in, in parallel, and uh, they essentially can, can have uh, dependencies defined on them. Uh, so in this case, uh, in, in this first block, we have two jobs. And those two jobs are running in a completely separate VMs. And um, uh, they're always running in, in, they're always starting in the same time in running in, par in parallel. So in this security audit block, we have these three jobs. Uh, those are started in parallel. And since we define dependencies in, in this way, uh, these sec audit and these unit test blocks are starting at, at the same time. Um, okay, um, so what we can do now? Let me jump into this test job. So um, uh, when you open the job page, essentially you have here uh, basic information about the environment. You have environment variables. Uh, you can also, yeah, there are a couple of uh, setup commands that we are running here. And uh, essentially, in this case, these are our commands. So uh, just some echo. We are checking the, the type of machine that we are running. We are calling this checkout command, which is checking out our code. And after that, we are just sleeping a bit, checking the version of the Ruby, and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, OK, this should not be running. Let's see. Yeah. Um, so yeah. If you, if you jump into, into on a job page, you, you see those those basic details. Um, okay, before moving uh, moving forward, um, let me show you how you can uh, choose uh, what type of machine do you want to use to run your job, and also what what type of the environment. Uh, so there are two uh, there are two things that you can configure on a level of a block. So if I go I just uh, if I just check the configuration of my pipeline as a whole, so under this agent section, you can see that I could use a Linux-based virtual machine. So this is this Ubuntu 18.04 machine, or I can, I can use a macOS Mojave image here. Um, you, you will you will just your, run your job inside the macOS, or uh, I can use a Docker container. And in case of a Docker container. If you specify your Docker container in this way, then we will, you know, uh, look up for your container on on Docker Hub, uh, or you can, 
or you can use you, you can specify any other type of uh, private or, or or public image uh, which we can use to run your commands in, in that container. You can also have multiple con multiple containers running. Uh, so, for instance, in this second one, uh, yeah, let's let's verify. So, semaphore. Okay. Would it complete? No, I thought it would complete to the Postgres. Uh, but yeah, you can use Postgres image. So for instance, just just saying Postgres uh, 9.6, and that image uh, will be will be downloaded and container booted. So you will have these these two these two images. So I will go a bit more into into details later, and I will show how you can debug your your jobs. But essentially, that, that, uh, that's the configuration that you can set on your on the pipeline level. If you do this on the pipeline level, uh, then all the all the blocks and all the jobs within those blocks uh, will utilize uh, this agent as default. In our case, for the sake of simplicity, we are going to uh, just switch back to this uh, Linux-based VM. And one other thing that you can choose is this machine type. So there, these are three machine types, and you can see. Uh, two and four gigas of two CPUs, four gigas of RAM, four eight eight sixteen, and those are the basic settings that you have on the pipeline level. Uh, on the level of individual blocks, you can also you can also configure agents. So, for instance, you don't want uh, all these all these jobs within your pipeline to run within Linux-based VM, but maybe you want uh, some of those to run on a macOS. Let's let's another block. Uh, so checks on macOS. Okay, let's say that we are fine. That these steps depends on the build step, and uh, yeah, then we we could we could say that integration tests will run uh, if also checks on macOS uh, are are green. So this is now our dependency chain that we have set up. Okay, let's go. Let's go to these blocks. We can have one job running here or multiple. In our case, let's just say request unit tests, and let's override our agent on a level of this this block, and let's specify Mac-based uh, virtual machine. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. Let's let's try this. I know that we uh, yesterday shipped some changes here uh, to the version of the Xcode that we have, and I'm not 100% sure if this is if this is reflecting that change. Uh, but yeah, we will will find it out soon. Okay, so uh, we have set up a new block with a new job uh, which will run on on macOS. Let's go ahead and commit these changes. So what you can see here is that. <coughs> Uh, our integration tests are now depend depend on on our new block, and we also have this new block defined, uh, which will utilize um, a, a macOS. And in our case, we said we don't have any commands, and let's change it. Let's um, at least do some echo. Hi. Okay, so let's let's commit this, and we can say uh, macOS checks. Okay, commit and push this to GitHub, and our new workflow should start shortly. Okay, uh, so the first block is running, and soon it's done. The, this should should start. One thing that I forgot to mention is that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is this is what something that we call pipeline. Uh, however, when we connect those multiple pipelines together uh, with these, which are we call promotions, then all that together we call workflow. And workflow is defined by the is defined by the uh, configuration uh, by the configuration that you have uh, in your Git repository in YAML files. And uh, yeah, those those pipelines are connected uh, together through promotions. And uh, let me actually jump to uh, my repository and show you how that looks. Uh, 
So what we have, we have a, <clears throat> a bunch of files here for various demonstration purposes, but this initial pipeline that, that we are editing and talking about is this one. Uh, so yeah, configuration of these blocks with all the commands are, are defined in this in this YAML format, which is uh, I think quite simple and, and, and readable. However, uh, yeah, it's it's always easier if you can if you can edit that through through the UI. Okay, uh, so our macOS job also passed. And yes, it did. So just by this, we, you can see that we are in a macOS environment. And yeah, th this command is executed. Uh, so th these are the, the basics of uh, how you can uh, how you can model dependencies between between your uh, between your uh, blocks. Well, let's just for demonstration purposes add one more and call that one a release block. And let's say in that one we will have a job which will do a push. Uh, of, of our docker image uh, push to our registry um, okay a uh, couple of other other things that you can configure on the level of uh, block so you can have a prolog a prolog are commands that would be prepended to all the jobs in a block it's easier if you want to draw your configuration such in in this case if you would configure prolog here so that will be something that will be prepended to all of these jobs uh, in case of epilog, um, uh, we can uh, have commands that will be always executed uh, as a part of each job, regardless uh, if it passed or failed. Or we have these conditions uh, to execute these commands only if a job passed or if job uh, job failed. Uh, let's see what else. So we can configure environment variables. Uh, okay, let's say. Let's use this. So we have foo is bar and foo, foo two is bar two. Um, so those those environment variables will be visible in all the jobs within this block. Okay. Uh, moving on. So secrets. Uh, so secrets are secrets can contain your credentials when you are configuring uh, something uh, which. Um, uh, something which needs some credentials which you don't want to store in your repository uh, but you want to keep them uh, safe and, and, and secure so for that purpose uh, semaphore has um, uh, semaphore has secrets and you can come uh, to the, in your sidebar, you have the secrets uh, link, and you can create a new secret. Uh, you can give it a, yeah, you should give it a name and. Um, and then you can define here environment variables and and attach files, which will be uh, written to the to the path that you specify. Um, so yeah, that's that's a way to to store your secrets uh, and, and attach them. We are going to take a, a bit deeper look in, into them in a second. But you can he see here I have a bunch of secrets defined, and if I would attach two of these, then environment variables and files from these secrets would be available within these jobs. Okay, then we have skip conditions, um, where we can define if a certain block would be skipped on a, on a certain branch or, or a tag. And here you have a documentation, uh, which is uh, explaining the, the, the syntax here. So the part that we are interested in here in is the, the, this part here, when we are specifying a condition if something should be should be skipped. Okay. And the last one is the agent that we already already talked about. So let's see uh, what are the changes that we that we made to our configuration. So yeah we attach these two secrets and we also specified these two these two environment variables and introduced a new block which depends on our integration tests and we have a single job which is uh, doing nothing which is also fine would work but let's say that we will do docker push okay so let's just commit this say add release Okay, so we, we, we have this running. Um, 
the, the next thing that, that I want to show you is how you can uh, debug your jobs. And uh, for that purpose, let's say that this this lint job failed for some reason and we, it's, it's hard to figure out from the logs what's going on and you would need to debug that interactively. Uh, so for that, um, you go to this debug button, then you get this pop-up and you get this command, send debug job. And uh, that command is, is useful in the combination with the, with the CLI uh, that we are providing. So let me put my terminal. Okay, let's just install. Uh, I have it. I have it installed, but I just want to be kind of percent sure that I have the latest version. Okay, it seems that I, I I have it, and now I'm going to use this command to connect to my to my dummy organization that I'm using, and to verify that Sam got projects. And there we have the list of projects that, uh, that um, we have configured. At this point, I can just go ahead and grab this command. Copy. So what's happening? What's happening now? Uh, new machine is being allocated for this job. And environment variables that we have specified secrets and, and all that is being exported into environment. Um, okay, and we are in. Also, all the commands that were meant to be run as part of this job are um, are in this commands sh file. So these are the commands that, that that we have that we have specified. Okay, that's not the idea, but just I just managed to execute managed to execute it. Okay, so let's so let's source commands sh. So it will help from prolog it um, uh, clone the clone the repository and um, yeah you can now um, run all your commands or can you run part of a uh, part of those commands that, that you need uh, and you can debug debug the the environment uh, check check what could be what could be wrong with your uh, with your job. Okay, uh, so with this SAM debug job, you can of course jump into a Linux-based VM. You can uh, jump into a Docker container that you have specified, or a macOS uh, macOS instance. Okay, uh, I don't know if I have any terminal. Maybe later. Okay, uh, so moving on. Let me just check a bit my the list of things. Need to talk about. Um, okay, uh, the next thing um, are artifacts. So when you are, um, let's say, um, you have you have a job which, uh, in case it it, it fails, um, generate some some. Uh, logs, uh, some screenshots maybe, and you would want to easily be be able to just uh, go in and uh, check those uh, those artifacts that were generated and debug debug the environment. Uh, so let's see how you can achieve that. Let's uh, jump jump into this. Let's use just this link job again. And let's say that uh, something we, we will simulate some failure here, and then we will have some logs that uh, that, that uh, we would want to to inspect. Uh, so let me show you how how you can do that with artifacts. So if I click on this job artifacts button, I get these instruction these you know notes that uh, I don't have anything stored here. But then when I open documentation, I get tip how how uh, you can how you can put some um, files uh, 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 in your job artifacts store. So in case uh, we want want artifacts, only in the case that something failed, uh, we have to use this syntax or use editor. But essentially, we have to use this command. So we have to use artifact push job and then specify path to a file or a directory that we want that we want to upload. Um, and um, 
yeah let, let's try let's try to do that so let's go to to our editor and say so in this job length um, or actually in all of these jobs if something fails we want to upload okay I will have a command here in case of failure which is uh, just doing some echo let's leave it there let's say artifact push job and then we would need to push a file so let's create a file echo lint let's say that this is the file okay so it's tmp slash locks good uh, okay let's see let's see what will happen however this job has to fail has to fail after this so let's do just a list of something that does not exist so it's essentially just the, just this command so push uh, logs to job artifact store okay okay so the file was created caused the failure now our epilogue commands are executed and the file should be pushed uh, into our artifact store so when i open job artifacts we have that file here and if i click on it uh, we will just uh, download download that file and uh, yeah so this is this is an easy way how we can store artifacts on your on the job level to debug something there are two other artifact store that are available uh, and the other one is on a workflow level so this one is super easy to access from any job of any pipeline within your uh, within your workflow and um, yeah let's uh, let's figure out how why 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 that is useful well for instance if we built a, a, a binary a binary file here we compiled our, our let's say go application and we want to use that same binary throughout our throughout our pipeline so what's the what's the easiest way way to do that excuse me so let's let's go ahead and simulate that we are going to get rid of uh, this uh, or we, we don't have to we just want don't want this to fail anymore so let that pass and uh, let's build that uh, let's build that binary so let's say here uh, let's name this build uh, our go app let's store it app okay it's there so once we did that we, we are just saying artifact push on the workflow level uh, and what do we need to push we need to push this tmp app okay so this this block is going to produce this application uh, and we want it in our sec audit and, and i'll grab this command and we also want it in our unit tests uh, so maybe in prolog here because we want it in each of our in each of our jobs we will just going instead of push we're going to say pull and we are going to pull from the, that artifact store which is just just for this workflow and it, it's going just to be placed in our current directory so in uh, maybe in draw let's say in first job let's just do ls okay it's only doing the ls of, of a current directory and we should have our app file app file there and we want to repeat the same thing for our unit tests okay pull workflow that's it and let's say ls current directory okay let's see what other 
let's just review the changes. So we renamed the, the block, we generated our compiled our application, we pushed it pushed it uh, to the workflow level, and now in this um, this block sec audit and unit test, we we have added this prolog essentially to pull that uh, to pull that application uh, application down, and then we can uh, run our tests. So uh, use artifacts to promote our hype. Okay, so let's do this. Once the first block uh, is completed and this job is completed, uh, here we we should have right now nothing, but we should have our app. Should be just a single file. Okay, it failed. What went wrong? Uh, logs does not exist. Okay, it should be app. Let's go here. TMP push workflow. Uh, we have app look here, which is trying to store if it has failed push logs, but it did not fail or did. Okay, so this is the thing. Good. Create app for real. Okay, it's done. We have the app here. We do. And okay. Okay. So within our artifact store, um, this this file is stored just as an just as app. And uh, not as uh, slash TMP app. Okay, that that's something that yeah we should be careful about. And it's true for both of these. So in Prolog, we are just pulling down the app. Same thing here. Okay, I'm going to commit this. And now finally we should have our application propagated uh, propagated through the through our pipeline. Okay. And it seems that we do. Okay, so we check the content. Artifact pool workflow app. So yeah, app is downloaded successfully, and it's here. So yeah, this is this is the, the other way to to utilize artifacts. So in this job store, we don't have any we don't have any artifacts. Just. Uh, um, Showing you, however, our artifacts are on this workflow level, and it's with a very simple command. It's very easy to move things through the through the pipeline. Uh, okay, uh, so let's see uh, the, the third the third level in which you can store artifacts, uh, which is maybe the simplest one to understand, is just on the level of a, of a project. So right now we don't have anything here, uh, but it's kind of a singleton store, like. Uh, like a bucket that you would have, uh, you know, Dropbox or similar. So it's a single one for a project. Whatever you push it, push here, uh, you can access it at any later, any any future, uh, you know, moment. And uh, yeah, you can pull it uh, from any any uh, job or workflow. And in that case, the command is just this. So artifact full push project. 
something uh, it will be you know forever available there and you can access it and pull it down from any of your um, of your jobs and, and workflows okay so that that's a way to to <clears throat> utilize artifacts to solve you know you know you can use it to solve very different you know very di different uh, problems but uh, what, what I demonstrated are some very very common ones okay uh, so th the next step is uh, to show you how you can utilize caching uh, to improve improve your build uh, build time. So uh, what what Sanford provides is uh, something that you can see as a attached hard drive, which is available in any of your jobs. Uh, it's kind of similar to artifacts, however, it's built with a different set of, of properties. So it's built for speed. Uh, not, dur not, uh, not, not durability, so it will not be around there forever. It also has a limited size of nine gigabytes uh, per project. Uh, you can pull, you can, uh, you know, store files uh, in in that in that store and pull, pull it down. Um, and if it gets full, uh, the new files will be automatically rejected. No, no, excuse me. Not not rejected, but the old ones will be rejected and uh, you know removed. Uh, the ones that are uh, I think the oldest. That's the that's the logic uh, that, that 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 we have. Uh, so, for purposes of that, let me pull up terminal and um, show you how that works. Uh, and it's a bit different bit different than than artifacts. Uh, there are some properties how you can retrieve uh, retrieve content from the cache store uh, based on a partial match of a key. Let's maybe just start a debug session here. As 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 with artifacts, also with cache, there is just a, a, this CLI command available in the environment, and uh, some of um, basic commands. So cache list. Uh, li uh, gives you the list of things that you have stored uh, in your cache. In our case, we have just this key ABC. Uh, so, uh, how how you can use cache? Let's say that we have a file or a directory, uh, which is holding your let's say Ruby gems. Let's say that they are stored in TMP bundle. Okay. And um, to store something to the cache, you do cache store, and then you say TMP bundle. Okay, but we need to provide a key. So how is this key composed? So you would say gems, and then you would probably want to include um, you probably want to include the name of the branch, and probably the checksum of the file which is holding your dependencies. So it's gem file lock uh, in most. Uh, in most of the cases, that would be very useful. Uh, in our case, let's just do cache uh, store a gem uh, abc, and uh, so this upload is complete, and this is what and your uh, your files are stored uh, within the cache. Uh, so it's it's kind of the same thing as as the artifacts on a workflow level. So in your downstream jobs, you would want to 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 restore restore these. And uh, in one of the downstream jobs, you would do cache restore, and then you need to specify a key. However, uh, you could also here specify some fallback keys. So let's say that this particular you know, checksum of, of your gem file lock is not available, but you would still we would still want to retrieve some gems. So in this case, you can specify a partial match. So you could just say gems dash, and if the first one is not is not hit, the second one will be used. Uh, so we can remove this T this TMP bundle. Show you how that would work. So let's say gems xxx. So those this is not available. However, however, we are using this partial match here, and we match this. Um, and also, if you maybe want to clear your cache for debugging, debugging purposes, you can do cache clear, and all the keys will be will be deleted. Um, it's probably best 
for me to show you that caching dependencies. Uh, so there is uh, this way which I which I show you where you specify specify the key that makes sense for your project, specify the directory that you want to cache, and or use these examples that that I mentioned where you would want to yeah use the let's say checksum of your gem file log or include the branch, uh, and then in cache restore. What you would use is cache restore gems. And then this revision, and then you will have a fallback key which can include the name of your branch or just just a master branch. Uh, there is also a, let's say automatic usage of this, uh, where you can do just uh, cache store. You just call this command, and then we figure out from the structure of your directory what are those dependencies that we would like to use that you, you are you are using, and we are going to store those. And then again, if you just call cache restore, we are detecting the, the structure and uh, actually restoring it. Uh, yeah, we should fix this into our uh, in, into your into your local environment. So yeah, that's the way how you can how you can restore things from from uh, 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 from from cache and uh, speed up your builds. Okay. Uh, so that's pretty much it, what, uh, what I had in mind to share uh, today. If you have uh, any additional questions, feel, feel free to put them in the comments uh, below the video. Yeah, if you haven't uh, subscribed to our channel, please, please subscribe. And if you have any additional questions about, about Sanford CICD, please feel free to send us email to uh, support at sanford Okay, thank you for your attention. Bye.